All right, what is going on, everyone? It is foul play here, uh, and we are back for another blue white burgle league here. Uh, we won the dry roll. We are versing Kagana, and we're going to be on the play. This hand is looking pretty solid. We're going to keep, and we're going to get into it. Uh, so I'm going to lead on my windswept heath here as well. Um, makes it easier to fetch a hallowed fountain. Maybe I want to like draw step fetch a tapped hallowed fountain or something. I'm not sure. Um, if I play like Flooded Strand, my opponent's more incentivized to thinking I'm a control deck, so they might not attack my hand so early with a Thought Seize or something. Uh, it's looking a little bit like Heliod combo again. Uh, that sucks. We At least we have a sideboard plan against Heliod combo with this deck, though, so that's something. Draw another Hallowed Fountain. All right, so I'm going to play it out Invisible Stalker here. And next turn, we can look to draw two cards with our Staggering Insight and Curious Obsession. Gaining a bit of life in the process. Hopefully, we find a Force of Negation plus an extra blue spell. And we can counter something important. Oh, opponent is actually on Ponza. They've gone for red mana there off the Utopia Sprawl. That's interesting. I wonder if we get Blood Moon here. I'm like super dead to Blood Moon here. Hopefully they pillage. I can't actually cast any of my auras. Again, Blood Moon, card we uh, care about that is cast during our opponent's turn. All right, we find Ethereal Armor. That's pretty fortunate. Um, hopefully we can keep rolling in the white auras or draw our second planes and start casting these Daybreaks. We do have Unblockable, which is nice, but Blood Moon is definitely slowing us down here. Hmm. Another downside to a two-mana creature here. A one-mana creature would already have the Staggering Insight on it, and we'd be drawing a turn each time we deal combat damage. The plus side is we have Unblockable, but, you know. Opponent plays the Chandra. And hardcast bone crusher giant. Well, we kind of have to go after Chandra here. Hmm. Yeah, this this sucks. Uh as it is, I would have been maybe slightly better off um fetching the basic island there. Opponent with the pillage on our planes. All right, that's really bad for us. Um, because then we'd be drawing cards off the Curious Obsession, right? So here we're fighting a losing battle against Chandra. Uh, Bloodbraid Elf and Season Pyromancer. So that's like really good value. Uh, we're not dead yet, but we need to find something to do very soon. We can draw Island into Echoing Truth and bounce their Blood Moon. So Island, play Curious Obsession, Attack, Echoing Truth, Blood Moon, and then Daybreak Coronets. All right, so uh, we blank. Uh, that's a no-go. So on to sideboarding. Sideboarding against a Blood Moon deck. What are we going to do here? I guess mostly we just want to fetch around it, right? We can path our own creatures potentially. Actually, Pithing Needle is really nice. It can name Arbor Elf and stop them from untapping stuff. Um, Suppression Field is also sort of okay, but not super amazing because it's a bit more expensive. I do like Echoing Truth. I need the Stubby D. Uh, I'm not super sold on Path actually. Our creatures are going to typically just be bigger. Mm, Torpor Orb seems pretty bad as well. Think here we can just minus an aqueous form and we'll submit that list and get into it. So this matchup should be a lot easier if we can play around what our opponent's doing. I do actually think this is strangely enough a keep with double curious obsession off a one lander. Um, there's an argument to just fetching out 
an island here. I think I'm going to risk it and go for the uh, the Hallowed Fountain, though. Opponent has Mulligan to 5 as well. That's helping us a lot. Mulligan to 4. All right, we just... Uh, we lose this... Or we win this one to variants. I'm... I don't know. I don't want to take any chances, actually. I'm just getting the island here. We'll play around the Blood Moon. If the When they mulligan down so hard, they're, like, way more likely to keep just a cheesy hand that will win on the condition of, like, a single card like Blood Moon. So I, I don't want to give that to my opponent. All right, so we do a Curious Obsession. We get in for the attack. Hopefully we get the other basic, and then we, like, just ru really ruin their day, right? All right. And by ruin their day, I mean take it to a game three. <laughs> oh, man, we draw the basic planes and everything. Let's go. You love to see it. All right, sweet. We've assembled mostly everything we want. Maybe another white mana for Daybreak Coroner, and then we'll be, like, super happy. Utopia Sprawl, yep. And any other effects? No. Sweet. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I can't imagine a world where we lose this game now. So each attack where we deal damage to our opponent, we're drawing two cards. We've got an Echoing Truth as interaction, and we've got a big fat seven power creature with Vigilance, First Strike, Life Link. And we just drew evasion as well. Sweet. Uh, so, yeah, this is looking very good for the Bogle deck. Opponent has conceded. Go. Let's go. All right, so this is sort of like the important game. They're on the play as well, so um, them having Blood Moon can potentially be way more backbreaking here. On the back of them having Magus in the Moon, maybe some Path to Exiles aren't too bad. I don't hate Pithing Needle. If they have Arbor Elf, we can just stop their Arbor Elf. Uh, maybe it's a little greedy, though. Same with the Suppression Field. Maybe the Paths are just better. Aqueous Form probably comes back in. Leaving the pithing needle. I don't. We haven't seen Magus yet. We have seen Blood Moon though. I... All right. So this is an interesting hand. Opponent's mulling to six. I think we keep it. We can uh, force spike, blue force spike our opponent's uh, turn to Blood Moon if that's what they're going for. Um, an Arbor Elf might actually make that pretty difficult, though, so we want to be seeing a Utopia Sprawl this turn. Alright, they've got the Utopia Sprawl, so the likelihood of Blood Moon has gone up. We find Curious Obsession, that's pretty good. Alright, I'm just going to play Out of Car Waste, and... Sort of try to disguise what I'm doing a little bit because I definitely want him to go for it. Stomping ground. Bone crusher giant. Okay. I'm okay with that. We find staggering insight. All right, let's uh let's play this one tapped. Pass the turn once more, and then once we can enchant our core spirit dancer to protect it from lightning bolt or stomp, then I'm gonna look to cast it. I'm not casting it just yet. I'll just take this damage, and that'll be fine. Cycling Thicket, okay. 
Opponent does still have access to Stomp Matter though, so I'm a little bit nervous about playing Spirit Dancer. Prismatic Vista. So at this point, I would think they would have cast Blast Zone if the, uh, Blood Moon if they had it. Arbor Elf. All right, sure. That is a really good draw. Um, I think it's just planes because we've got the Daybreak Coronet out. Although that switches off potentially Stubborn Denial or... Hmm. Getting Island allows us to cast an extra creature should our Core Spirit Dancer die and allows us to cast an extra creature through a Blood Moon. Which is something. Let's cast Spirit Dancer and start skipping to our second main. I want to see if they go for the Stomp. Alright. Uh, I'm going to try and run out the Ethereal Armor here. Really hope that they uh, don't have the Stomp or the Lightning Bolt. Damn. There's the Stomp. Uh, we do get a card draw from it though. So it's not all Doom and Gloom. We find Windswept Teeth. Well, hopefully we find another creature off the top and we can go in on that other creature. Currently, they haven't done anything too sinister with their own side of the board. Uh, so we're not really under that much threat. But if we blank twice in a row, it's definitely over. Um, if we just... I, I, I feel a lot more comfortable if we just ripped a creature off the top, though. Um... The vulnerability of course Spirit Dancer is so real. Alright, so we'll go to pass. One card left in their hand. We take nine damage this turn. Alright, we're just dead. Maybe they don't attack with everything for some reason. Um, they can't honestly, they can't possibly be that stupid, can they? Alright, cool. Well, we lose this one, whatever. Uh, if we... If we stick our creature, we're fine there. But I think even if my opponent goes for a Blood Moon there, they're, we're probably okay. Um, match number two here. Uh, we have no creature. We need a Mull. We've also won the Die Roll, so we're going to be on the play. Versing Stable Salmon. And uh, so far, I'm not seeing much to keep. So we're going to be going to down to five here. And... All right, so five's looking a decent amount better. So we're gonna keep this one. Need to put two cards on the bottom. Definitely thinking like Force of Negation. I kind of like Aqueous Form with Curious Obsession, but it's probably just greedy. Probably just want the first strike with Hyena Umbra. A little bit more aggressive clockwise. Opponent uh, mulliganed five cards also. We'll see if they keep theirs. Looks like they've kept their five. So slam down creature, pass the turn. And what is in store? Hey, Death Lippy. Uh, but you get first strike from Coronet already. Um, I do. But that's assuming I can get it down. They could put down like a turn one or a turn two creature that... Uh, can potentially chump block. I might want the totem armor as well. That's like the the main reason that I'm looking at uh, keeping the hyena umber in hand as well, right? Opponent not play a land. Okay, watery grave here, and scry from aqueous form, uh, form can help find the second mana source. Yeah, it can. Um, I definitely agree with you there about the scry. Uh, we found it anyway. We're pretty lucky. Um, I think mostly. It depends on what I'm versing, right? Because there's some decks where I'm going to want the Hyena Umbra. Um, maybe they have the bounce effect for the Daybreak Coroner and then like they chump block something or they, they abrupt decay the Daybreak Coroner and then they're blocking the creature. Um, I guess Aqueous Form pushes the damage through. It's just like, it's just a bit slower not having that extra damage source, right? From the Hyena Umbra. 
in any case, we're, we're versing Mill, so I I think your line was better, which was the line that potentially draws me to my counter magic here. Or even my removal. Opponent's splashing green in their mill deck. I uh, have lost double staggering insight, invisible stalker, and daybreak coronet. Um, a couple of lands. Making us mill eight eight now as well. Okay. Losing all the cards. Well, good news is two attacks and he's dead. Uh, if we can last that long. We're drawing Invisible Stalker. I think the uptick on... What is this rubbish? Go away, AVG. Um, they never have a chump blocking here. We're drawing a card. If we draw Force of Negation, we're potentially in a very nice spot as well. Uh, Cross Spirit Dancer. Lame. All right, so we'll just play a land there. I don't want to crack this because Archive Trap will make us mill 13 if we do. So one stubborn denial has hit the graveyard. And a couple of hyena umbras. What's he doing for four mana Uro? Eh? Uh so a mill deck splashing in for Uro, that's interesting. Two cards left in hand. We've got 31 cards left in library. I think this is a good point to crack this fetch land. The chance of Archive Trap is lower, and we want to do this before he draws. Now, it doesn't make a difference because they can still Archive Trap after the draw. Um, this could be risky, actually. Opponent goes to 8. A mill deck with Uro. And they find another fetch land to play. Yikes. We're taking so much from this crab. Thankfully, it's just one crab, though. Force, both Force of Negations in the graveyard now as well. Uh, we find Invisible Stalker. So we can attack our opponent to, I guess, one here. And get a card draw. We find a Daybreak Coronet. I'm going to play the Invisible Stalker here. There's potential to kill my opponent through the Uro life gain next turn. Um, if we draw a one mana aura and then go in on the Invisible Stalker. Otherwise, they can just chump block the Slippery Bogle and start, like, and live for an extra turn, which can be quite problematic. We have lost quite a few one mana auras to the graveyard, though. One Ethereal Armor. So we've still got three Ethereal Armors in the deck. One Hyena Umbra in the deck. One less ethereal armor. Um, there's one aqueous form. No, two aqueous forms in. No, three aqueous forms in the graveyard. Okay. And two arcane flights in the library as well. Potentially win it for us. Alright. Opponents uh, just letting us attack them. So. That's got to be good, right? Or have they got Cryptic Command in this mill deck? It's possible if they're running Uro that they've got Cryptic. Okay, they concede. Alright, I have a sneaking suspicion that we were very, very lucky there. Uh, I haven't got any extra counter magic in our sideboard. We can potentially name a fetch land or a Field of Rune with... Pithing Needle, and the same with Trick Bind. We can stifle the effect that can stop us from hemorrhaging cards. Mm. Opponent has a decent number of Fatal Push in these lists normally, so I think Invisible Stalker is just going to be the safer option. Echoing Truth can bounce a couple of creatures, I guess, in response to... The activation of a fetch land, so it's sort of similar to Pithing Needle and Trick Bind. We could pack our own Surgicals here, but that doesn't seem amazing. Uh, yeah, no. Leyline's just a must-have against Mill. I can't believe I didn't see that sooner. 
so, so far I'm not really liking any of those cards. They can all move out. And we can probably just trim on some Staggering Insights. I don't want to completely remove all of them though. Remove one Aqueous Form as well. Alright, sweet. Let's get into it. Hopefully we get a good hand with Leyline. I haven't had one of those in a while against Mill. It's like... It seems like in all the matchups where I want my ley lines, they're just not there. Alright, so we got no creature here. We needed to mull. Um, there was a day where I tried playing Dried Arbor in this list, but it just wasn't good enough. I'm going to keep this hand just because ley line of Sanctity is really, really strong. Uh, we can bottom a fetch land so we don't trigger their archive trap, although I guess it doesn't really matter. Alright, sweet. Turn on Crab. Tom on crab. All right, that's the target crab. That's not the newer one that makes each opponent. So happy to see that crab. Uh, we'll play the hallowed fountain here. On the odd chance we draw another white aura, we want to be able to cast double aura, double white aura next turn. If we draw a curious obsession. It's probably a little bit better for us. Alright, so mill land. Milling themselves. And you need explosives to the graveyard. That's scary. So trick bind um, and pithing needle go up in value now. Although we have a hyena umbra, which is pretty nice. Help protect our creature. The thing is with uh, blue white, you can only run four totem armor effects with the hyena umbra, so you're running a few less. Maddening Cassophy. Wait, that makes each opponent mill? Oh man. Next level stuff here. So we lose double path, a bunch of lands, a curious obsession, a force, and a lane line. It's not too bad. Alright, let's hope for a good one mana draw. Oh, opponent going after curious obsession here. Alright. Well, they're going to get a look at our deck. Look at our library. And what we're about. Interesting that they didn't go after the counter magic there. Hmm. Well, our whole library is revealed to our opponent. <laughs> no tricks anymore. Although, I say that, but uh, now in the sideboard, maybe we got some, some tricks up our sleeve still. Alright, so Hyena Umbra and Attack for 2. Good news is, like, the Hedron Crab ta can't target us. It uh, can only target them, unless they somehow deal with Leyline. So, in for 2. Hmm. How many... I started out 2 Staggering Insights, so I'm drawing to 2 Staggering Insights. Hmm. Oh, is this an Assassin's Trophy? Man, that's, uh... I guess that makes sense. They're splashing green for Uro and Assassin's Trophy. This operates a bit more like a Sultai Uro deck, but with Mill as the win con. This is sort of interesting. And you need explosives as well. Hmm. Archive trap, man. Okay. <laughs> Alright, we're losing all the things. Oh, that is a very good draw, though. Uh, let's just continue racing our opponent. We have not got a better line. What? Ah. Uh, taps for the first mode. The first mode is colorless. Trying to shorten everything with the uh, hotkeys. Or the W. You hold W and it selects the first land option. Alright, so we'll attack in for eight here. Put our opponent to three. Alright, one more attack and we win. Although, uh... We've, uh, we've got 23 cards left in the library, which isn't that many. Down to 20. This uh, fetch land here. We're at the point where if we find Leyline of Sanctity, we can hard cast it as well. Oh, is opponent leaving up jump blocks here with uh, their Hedron Crab? Alright, let's attack. 
Have they got it? When I say have they got it, have they got anything? <laughs> Alright, looks like something's happening here. Blue and green. What's blue and green? Is this card an instant? No, it's a sorcery. Uh, they're going after my land. Alright, so I'm guessing... What's left in our library here? That's kind of important. Aqueous Form, Arcane Flight, Daybreaks, Ethereals, A Ley Line, A Staggering Insight. Okay. So we can't find a land there. And what do we lose? Ethereal, Invisible Stalker. Alright. Anything else before you chant lock? Because he kind of has to jump lock. In case my opponent hasn't been keeping track of like my stubborn denies as well, I think I'm gonna play the stalker and leave one card in hand. Uh, invisible stalker getting in for that one point of damage might be relevant. And playing the Flooded Strand is probably never going to be relevant here. Hedron Crab down. Why is there an arrow pointing at my Atacar Waste? Is it just a glitch? Or is he going to Surgical? Assassin's Trophy targeting Daybreak Coronet. Okay. Uh, so we won't fetch, their creature will die, play our guy, and no cards in hand from my opponent. Alright, that's not too bad. Um, our mana's definitely taken a hit here though. Visions of Beyond, well that's a pretty good card to draw you back into it. That is a pretty darn good card. Can you get there? <laughs> Alright. Maddening unkicked. Making us mill eight. Uh, I think that just means we win. <laughs> I'll put it on the stalker just to be sure and attack in there. Any effects? I can't imagine a world where we lose this match. GG's. Alright, we got the GG's. Ooh. Alright, match number three here. We lost the die roll. Uh, gonna be on the draw. And this hand looks like a keep to me. It's not like super amazing, but it's definitely pretty strong. A uh, turn one creature into potentially a turn two staggering insight, starting that card draw. Starting the life gain, very strong. Opponent with Watery Grave into nothing else. Alright, sweet. We draw the Force of Negation. That's really nice. It's such a powerful effect to have. I have no luck. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so Bogle and past turn. Let's see what they do. Looks like they're looking to play in our turn. Um, I'm going to lead on Ethereal Armor. It's probably going to be enough to get countered. Then we can play out our Aqueous Form. That resolves. Alright. Uh, see what they do about Aqueous Form. It's definitely a worse counterspell target. So we get to attack and scry one. Deal three damage. I really don't like just jamming the staggering insight there. Um, our opponent with the petty theft. This could be the rogue deck that we versed earlier on. I'm going to put this on the bottom. I'm looking for land at the moment, not a daybreak. Uh, if this is the rogue deck we versed earlier on, um, we did win. 
I can't remember the exact list, and I, I've taken other screenshots since I've asked it, so... <laughs> Apparently my opponent has versed two Bogle decks this league so far. I'm like, how is that even possible? It's like extremely low in the metagame. Not many people running it at all. If you look at like MTG Goldfish in the metagame breakdown, like there's very few decks that are Bogles. Uh, so yeah, here we are. We're gonna attack for five here. Opponent, of course my opponent can interact as well. They can't chump block because we have unblockable. This is definitely a top. This is a great card to top. Really help us close out this game quickly. If our opponent goes for the damnation as well, we can counter it. That's really sweet. Uh, my opponent doesn't realize that uh, my creature's unblockable, maybe. Or maybe they do realize. I'm not sure. So we draw the ethereal armor. We have a poor some negation now. And Damnation, we're safe against, and then we just kill on Crackback. Opponent's attacking us, okay. Uh, so they can 4 mana in that, the Rogue here. Okay, they don't go for that. Interesting. Like, sort of a must counter this ethereal armor. I think I just want to attack like this. Um, maybe not. Opponent can't instant speed damnation, so this is fine. Alright, attack for 13, put my opponent to 1. Draw 2 cards. Cryptic, tap my board, okay. That's fine. I think it's an activated ability on the uh, five mana rogue, blue, blue black road creature that uh, swaps places with a different rogue that's attacking. And then when it deals combat damage to a player, there's like an effect. All right, opponent concedes. All right, I'm definitely putting my opponent on rogues though. So. Uh, I think Pithing, uh, Path to Exile is going to be pretty reasonable here. Surgical Extraction off the chance that they try to Cryptic lock us with like Snapcaster Mage could be pretty handy too. Uh, Echoing Truth seems pretty bad. And they're a black deck, so Leyline of Sanctity is pretty important. Probably more important than the Surgicals or the Paths, really. Mm. Maybe I'll leave in one Surgical and take out two Staggering Insights, because it's kind of clunky. Alright, we'll do that. Alright, so game number two here. Our opponent has mulled to six. They're on the play. We're on the draw. Uh, we got a stalker hand. It's not amazing, but I think it's definitely better than the average hand. Opponent's mulligan to one card. Uh, okay, well, uh, we just win to the fact our opponent mulligan to one. Um, Alright, so match number four here. We lost to Dire Roll. We are versing Mash Maloveski. Malavoski. I see the Ovski and I'm thinking Russian. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so opponents keeping seven. We have no mana, so we need a mull. Uh, this sounds like so much better, so we're going to keep and bottom a Windswept Teeth. And yeah, looks pretty reasonable here. We get a Scry effect with Unblockable and Curious Obsession, so we can start the draw train. Lotus Bloom. We're versing Ad Nauseam. This matchup is so much easier when you have counter spells, man. Normal Bogles pretty much just loses to this like 95% of the time. Um, 
maybe even higher these days. But with counter magic, you're in a much, much better spot. Opponent with the turn one Lotus Bloom, which is a little bit unfortunate for us. With the Temple Trigger, they scry to the top of their library. Sleight of hand here as well. Trick my uh, Serum Visions. Um, the other like sweet thing is because it's online, they're more incentivized to go for like a Thassa's Oracle win condition, and we can trick bind the trigger and make them lose the match. It's pretty funky. Um, really, the main thing I see us needing to do here is to find more counter magic, though, rather than rush to kill them. Uh, so I'm going to get down this Aqueous form and start looking for counter magic, or maybe on Echoing Truth. Uh, with the Serum Visions as well, they scribe two to the bottom. Uh, mana is not what we're looking for. So we're going to get a card draw. And we're always going to draw cards to this. Another Staggering Insight. Not too shabby. Uh, creature's still not at four power though, so we don't have an enabled ferocity. Oh man. Alright, so opponent with the Scryland here. And they're scryed to the bottom of their library. Alright, that's not too bad. Uh, here we might as well just search out a Hallowed Fountain because it's sort of like not, not ever killing us on damage, right? Be very surprised if they went for a Lightning Storm. Lotus Bloom is coming off Suspend next turn and... We haven't got Ferocity enabled yet either. Um... I'm going to put this on the bottom. I think drawing a Force of Negation is more likely to win us the game than the Arcane Flight is there. Like, it enables the Ferocity, but, I mean, it's pretty unlikely. We find Ethereal Armor. Alright, well, I'm going to hold up Stubborn Denial anyway. Maybe the one mana is relevant. Probably not. And then uh, we're probably just dead to... All the stuff that Ad Nauseam normally does. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get to full power here. We get full power, we're in a much better spot to win it. Opponent's not going for it yet. Interesting. I'll definitely take that as a win. Maybe they're going to look to go for an instant speed. We've got Ferocity enabled, and I'm definitely playing out the Staggering Insight here. Attack for 9. Uh, so we get Scry 1, and then uh, Triple Card Draw. Angel's Grace is fine. That, that can happen. Alright, opponent's going for it. Uh, we'll counter the Ad Nauseam, and hopefully that's good enough. Alright, that the counter resolves. We'll bottom this Adakar Waste. That feels really good. Oh, if he went for it during his turn, I was so dead. Alright, we draw a bunch more Auras. Alright, have they got a second copy of things? No, that's good enough to win it. Sweet. Well, that was a bit of a pause because our opponent went away. But, yes, yeah, sweet. We got the win. That's huge. That is absolutely huge. Alright, so counter spells are good. I think Trick Bind's going to be pretty good. Uh, Pithing Needle does nothing. Leyline of Sanctity doesn't really do much either. Torpor kind of does stuff, but it also incentivizes them to move away from what we're bringing in our Trick Binds for, so that's Probably bad. Uh, Echoing Truth is good. It bounces Fraxion on life. And... I think we just... Uh, maybe... I'm not sure if we want to remove all the aqueous forms here. We've got... 
16 one mana auras. Yeah, I think we can just remove two of them. Oh, wait, we've still got Path in the deck. Crap. No, 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 no. All right, well, it uh, looks like it's submitted through. I don't think I'm going to get to change that. Oopsie daisy. Uh, hand's great. We're keeping. This hand's actually really, really good. Look at all this card draw. Four card draw auras in our hand. Getting the draw train happening this match, I'll tell you. All right, so Temple Garden here, scry one. Uh, so we scryed top with that one as well. Hey, uh, uh, VPAJO, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate it, man. Hope you're enjoying the video or the, uh, the stream. <clears throat> All right, so opponent goes for the Pentad Prism here. We're going to take some damage. Oh, we'll not take some damage. They're going to take some damage. We're going to draw some cards. And hopefully we find some counter magic or a trick bind here. Again, my opponent is extremely likely to go for the Thassa's Oracle win condition because it's much quicker for their own time than uh, doing a lightning storm to the face. They shouldn't have mana for both. Phyraxian on life. I'm pretty happy countering that. Um... If they don't have Angel's Grace, getting rid of Phyraxian on life is like very, very important there. We find Invisible Stalker. Alright, so we'll just play out our Staggering Insight. We'll draw three cards this turn. Any effect from my opponent. Alright, so it looks like we get to go to combat. They could do like a Nature's Claim or something off the Pentad Prism. Alright, Counterspell, Counterspell. Come on deck, Echoing Truth. Something. I'm going to shock this into scare him. There's no reason not to. Temple of Deceit. Alright, what's he doing with the scry? Scrying bottom. Sweet. Awesome. Well, we're, our, our hand is full of lands right now, but that doesn't matter. We're drawing some more cards. And we've got some interaction as well. Sweet, there's a Stubborn Denial. That's perfect. Uh, second main, I'm going to play out some auras as well. An aura. I'll leave up both Stubborn Denial and Echoing Truth, and if I have to discard a couple of lands, you know, that's definitely not the end of the world, considering how much value we've got so far. Alright, what's our opponent doing? They probably have to go for it here. City of Brass into nothing. All right, sweet. Or a trick bind. Yes, we just attack and leave up three ways to interact. Seems like a pretty high chance, percentage chance of winning, even if we're winning over two turns, as opposed to cracking the Waterlog Grove and only being able to do two things. So take my three things. Daybreak Corona off the top. All right, opponent uh, concedes. Well, hands full of uh, counter spells and everything. That's really sweet. Awesome. All right, so match number five, guys. We won the die roll. Uh, we're on the play. Uh, this hands needs some help, but I think it's a keep. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it. Opponent is on a Lurus deck. So I sort of smell Death Shadow shenanigans there. 
I think we can probably lead on the island here and conserve our life total. On the chance that they have Scourge of the Skyclaves, that's pretty nice for us. There's a good chance Thoughtseize is coming our way. Uh, it's probably taking the Hyena Umbra and then I'll probably have the removal for the Core Spirit Dancer. So just going to play like a little bit patient here. See what we can do. Inquisition of Kozilek. Yep, there it is. I think no matter what, Stubborn Denial is probably staying in hand. Um, so they're making a choice between Spirit Dancer or Hyena Umbra. I I think them taking the Hyena Umbra is probably going to be better overall because they probably have the Fatal Push for the Spirit Dancer. We unfortunately draw Ethereal Armor there. Uh, I'm going to play out the Hyena Umbra here. Hopefully they don't have the second discard spell for Ethereal Armor. We got Stubborn Denial if they look to do two things. Uh, they could be a Suicide Zoo deck with Swift Spear plus Thought Seize. So that's possible. Um, this will just let our opponent do what they want to do. Alright, Bloodstained Maya getting cracked. Shocking. Alright, so this is definitely like a Jun Shadow deck here. They play out a Tarmogoyf. We do have the Ethereal Armor, which is very nice. We do just draw the Invisible Stalker, though. Invisible Stalker is very strong. Hmm. think I want to go in on the Bogle though. My my turns don't work out very cleanly if I go in on the Stalker there. Um, and I have to shock in the Hallowed Fountain, which I'm not a big fan of. It's, it's a shame because, like, even if we play Stalker plus um, Ethereal Armor, we have a 2-2 and we have a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, we might as well uh, stop and denial this Thought Seize. Opponent doesn't need to know about our last card. They have another discard spell. They spend their whole turn answering it rather than just one. Mm. I don't know. That was maybe an iffy play there. Hex Drinker. Okay, that's not too bad. Although, Tarmogoyf is now five toughness, but he attacks with it. Kind of happy about that. Oh, we find Arcane Flight. That's massive. That's absolutely massive. I don't think we can lose now. Uh, they can have Assassin's Trophy on my Arcane Flight. Potentially. Hmm. Any, any like, aura that isn't Daybreak Coronet that adds power, we can put it on Invisible Stalker. So... As well, whether it's Staggering Insight, uh, Hyena Umbra, Arcane Flight, etc. As long as it's not Aqueous Form. Alright, sweet. So we get the win. This is like a Jund... Jund Hexproof deck. A Jund Shadow deck with Hex Drinkers. So we definitely want our Ley Lines. We want our Paths. Potentially because Death Shadow, right? Rest in Peace is so good against, against Tarmogoyf. It's not funny. Um, really big advocate of that card. I think Counter Magic probably needs to go out. Maybe we can leave in like one Force of Negation as like a fifth ley line so we can guarantee getting our creature down. Aqueous Form feels a little bit cute against this deck, as does Echoing Truth. So let's go with this. Still have a lot of one mana auras and Hex Rift creatures here. Damn. Uh, if one of these lads was swapped out for a creature, this hand would be amazing. But uh, alas, we're mulliganing. All right, this is still a really good keep. We're going to keep this one. I'm gonna... No, I can't bottom that land. I 
Have to bottom the island here, otherwise I turn off my Daybreak Coronet. I think having the Chump Lock is going to be important as well. Best case scenario is drawing a Seacrow and Coast on our first draw and then never drawing another land again just so we can keep our life total high. That or Staggering Insight would also be really nice, but we don't really have much... All right, I almost just skipped through my turn because the uh, Misha's Bubble activated. Uh, all right, so I uh, probably should have let on the Windswept Peeth there, right? It's a bit gives me the option of getting either basic instead of what I've done. I think it's pretty likely that if we fetch a basic off our Windswept Heath, though, it's probably going to be the Plains. All right, what's our opponent going for now? Double crack fetch lands. Is it Scourge? It's Scourge. I can't actually attack into that Scourge. I'm going to crack this for one. Just for the planes here. Play my Invisible Stalker. Potentially Chump Block with the Bogle. Just to keep Scourge in check. My opponent can't kill me this turn. Hmm. Uh, let's jump block with the Bogle. We've got another Bogle in hand that we can jump block with in a future turn. Keep this thing small. We need Curious Obsession to start drawing us into some gas. No Assassin's Trophy attacking our ley line yet either. Alright, what's our draw? Path to Exile, that's a really good draw. That is a massive draw. Dealing with Scourge is very, very nice. So, I guess we'll see if our opponent uh, has the Abrupt Decay on the Curious Obsession. Maybe they were looking to 2 for 1 our Daybreak. Uh, as it is, we get to land the hit and draw a card. Draw another Bogle, lol. <laughs> oh man, that's shocking. Alright, so opponent going with Unravel the Ether on our Leyline of Sanctity here. Joke's on our opponent, our hand is hot garbage and we can path in response to the thought says. I have never seen anyone else play Unravel the Ether before. Let's talk real here. Nobody plays this card. It's really good against Welding Jar type effects, so... If my opponent's like got this in here for hammer time, um, it's actually pretty clutch that uh, it, it gets around the regen, right? So opponent makes us discard a bogle, plays a land. So they drew land for turn because they missed a land drop the turn prior to that. And is it shadow or is it another scourge? Ioc, okay. <laughs> Death shadow, okay. Oh my god, these draws this game in. <laughs> a super high roll that draws against Ad Nausea and then I draw all uh, hexproof creatures and ley lines in this one. Uh, it's not bad. Their alarm are off the top and we're one damage off killing them. Um, there's still a decent ways to killing us. Alright, Ethereal Armor off the top and we win. Ethereal Armor or Daybreak Coroner and we get the win here. Team of Battle Rage. Oh, that's exactly 16. Alright. Re... Unravel the Aether. Interesting. Alright, so Force of Negation goes down a peg here. Um, 
I think Stubborn Denial probably goes up one. Maybe Aqueous Form. Let's do Aqueous Form. We did see the Death Shadows, so that's pretty good. Actually, Echoing Truth could be pretty strong against Team Battle Rage. Especially if they put down multiple creatures. We'll take the Aqueous Form back out for the Echoing Truth. And, like, against multiple Soul Scour Mages as well. Um, or, sorry, um... Monastery Swiss Spears as well. It's uh, pretty strong. Let them build up their prowess and then bounce them. Alright, we'll keep this one. I'm gonna... It's a hard, hard mulligan decision. I want to keep double creature because if my opponent has thought seize, which is quite likely, uh, I want to guarantee a creature. So I think it's a hard one, but we need to bottom the path to exile here. Otherwise, we just have no auras or no creatures to one thought seize, um, which is pretty darn likely. Good thing about this hand is it doesn't deal damage to us as well. Opponent's mulligan to 6-2. Hex Drinker turn one. All right. Maybe that path would have came, came in handy there. Uh, we do draw Arcane Flight, so all of a sudden we've got pretty good auras in hand. And we're looking to draw one more land source. No aggressive fetch shock here. They're attacking for two. I can actually trade this and then play the Stalker. If they drew a discard spell, though, that's a lot worse. I'm just going to take the two damage. Uh, it's likely they're going to play a Scourge post-combat. Yep, there's the Scourge of the Skyclaves. Filter our draws. We got some chump blockers for future turns. Oh baby, yes. Oh my goodness, yes. All right, now we're just dodging the, I guess, unravel the ethel, but also uh, assassin's trophy. Opponent cling to dust on our lands, drawing a card. It's good that they're eating up their mana doing that instead of uh, making their creatures bigger, reducing theirs and all our life totals. Mm. Leveling up the Hex Drinker and Death Shadow. It's not too bad, really. Alright, we play our guy. <laughs> we're gonna pump up the death shadow uh hopefully they can't reduce their life total so low that uh all right, bottom this so low that team of battle rage kills us although we can first strike deal damage to scourge um or the scourge is dead we can first strike deal damage to hex drinker if they attack with both we don't have to totem armor to jump block with though Definite weakness right now. What's everyone thinking of the deck so far? Uh, this is game number five. You've seen it in action for almost a full league now. Uh, we can't jump block. If they have Tim Battle Rage here, they win. Can uh, take a point of damage from the nurturing Pete, and we have no way around that. Um, that's like really unfortunate. Damn. All right, so that's a three-two. Uh, VP Joa. The deck seems more tempo than the green-white version. Yeah, possible. Uh, it depends on the start. Like if you get these curious obsessions down and happening, it's pretty strong. Um, I'm not even sure that I have the. This is the list I'm running, not the other one. Not even sure I have the most optimal list yet. Like, obviously, getting more force and negations will strengthen it. But as far as the auras are concerned, it's still up in the air. Like, it's a sort of a new archetype, really. 
um, with not many people trying to discover what it does well. But yeah, um, I'm, I'm really enjoying the deck. I think it's probably more consistent than Green White. Uh, I ended up 4-1. No, I ended up 3-2. Um, I lost the first match against Ponza, unfortunately. Um, and then lost that last match against Shadow. That that last match there was very close to being a win for us as well, though. Uh, if we could uh, on our lands, we might have been able to have uh, done it instead. But yeah, no, it's it's really sweet. I like this is this is uh, pretty much all I play. Um, I'm just gonna end the YouTube video here, and I'm gonna sit talking for a bit longer afterwards. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know down below what you thought. Uh, if you're new, subscribe for daily Bogle content and ring the bell for more. Thank you all. Have a great day.